All right, so that gives us this intensity here. Wait, so can you not use that in the formula? Because it's not on the surface? Well, that's a good formula. However, you certainly can't use this number with this area. Yeah. Because they're referring to different places. So you find the area of the bigger circle? That's right. That's right. So one thing that would have made our picture better was to be, would be to draw a bigger circle out here where the astronomer is. Maybe I'll draw that as a dashed line. So here's the sphere of the radiation out where the astronomer is. <clears throat> How do we know that we should start by focusing out here? Because this is the place they told us the information about. They told us the information about where the astronomer is, and they're asking us about this point. So probably we have to start out here and then move in. My only suggestion is that you should try to build that into your picture. It's always good to take your time and build the information that you've gotten into your picture. So that's the area. The area of this big sphere is 7, what, what did you get for that? 0.85 times 727 square meters. Okay, and we build that in. And what did you do after you found this area? I put an O, P over that equals 0.055. Yeah, um, that's right. Now we used our uh, intensity and power equation. So intensity is power over area. So we've got 0 0.055 equals P over 7.85 times 10 to the 27th. Okay, what did that give you? 4.32 times 726. Now, where are you going to put that in your picture? On the outside circle. So we just figured out the power over here. The power here is 4.32. Is that how you rounded it off? Uh -huh. Times 10 to the 26, and that would be in watts. Okay, so now we've really figured out everything we can about this big circle, big sphere where the astronomer is. So now what? So now you find the intensity of the smaller one by using 4.32 and 7.6? Right, because what's going to be the power on this circle? <coughs> uh, the same. Yeah, that was the big lesson we saw before, conservation of energy. If there's 4.3 times 10 to the 26 joules per second spread out here, it has to be the same amount here. So again, it would be a really good habit to actually show that in our picture. So the power is also the same amount on this circle, too. So that divided by 3.14 times 10 to the 18th? Because we already figured out the area of the smaller circle. So it's 1.38. I think that's right. What, what answer did you get there again? 1.38 times 10 to 8. And we should label that over here. 1.38 times 10 to the 8. And that would be watts per square meter. That's the intensity of this circle. OK, good. So that equals sigma t to the 4. Now we can use our black body equation here, because they told us this was a black body. Good. So what happens when we work with that? Uh, I divide by 9.67 times 10 to the negative 8. Good. 2.49 10 to the 15th equals t to the 4th. Fourth root it. How do fourth root on here? 
What did you get for uh, the T to the fourth again? 2.4 times 10 to the 15th. One of us made a mistake. Uh, so let's see. Is it 1.3 times 10 to the 8th over 5.6? Oh, I just used the wrong constant, didn't I? So yeah, that should be 5.67. I was totally off of my constant. So sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. And now what, what did you get again? 2.4 times 10 to the 8. 10 to the 8th? I mean, 15. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that would be in Kelvin's 2.4 times 10 to the 15th. Okay. And let's see, what type of calculator do you have? 2.30. Yeah, I did this. For X answer. Yeah, that's right. 7.02 times 10 to the 3rd. Okay, so when we take the fourth root, the fourth root is 7.02 times 10 to the third kelvins. The other thing you could do is you could raise this to the one quarter power. Oh, yeah. A fourth root is raised to the one quarter power, but you actually found you actually kind of have a fourth root function on your calculator. But you can just raise this to the one quarter power. So we both got 7.0 times 10 to the third. All right, let's actually put this in uh, normal notation. Uh, what would this be as a normal number then? 7020. Does this make sense? What was the question asking us for? The temperature on Where? the surface of the star. All right. Well, this seems about right. This is a pretty high temperature, right? Uh, maybe this isn't quite as high as we might expect, but this is out at the surface. It would be even more hotter inside the, the, uh, the star. So this is a pretty high temperature, so I guess this seems about right. Okay. All right, so what were the things we had to put together here? Well, there was a lot of this power and intensity business, but notice we had to use these twice. First of all, they told us the intensity of the big sphere. Once, so we could find the power of the big sphere, but we know that's the same as the power of the smaller sphere. But notice, the powers are the same for all the wave fronts, but not the intensities. Obviously, the intensities, why are the powers the same? Because each wave front has the same number of joules of energy spread over it. However, the intensities are different because each wave front has a different area. Um, so we can move the power from one circle to the other. Um, I think one thing that gave you trouble was that I think at first you were trying to use this intensity with this area. So it's really helpful to actually draw these pictures and put all the numbers in the right place uh, so you don't get confused about that. Uh, then we use the Stefan Boltzmann equation. Uh, so what would be another question they could ask us now? Um, what is the intensity? No. Um, that was kind of a weird question, but what I was going for it there. Now I think we figured out the temperature. At the right? outer? Uh, let's see, I guess they could ask us uh, what the temperature is, although let's see, I don't know if that would apply here because there isn't actually any black body here, oh, yeah. right, it's just the waves. So I don't know if the temperature still works when you're outside, I don't, think it, I don't think it still works when you're actually outside the body. That was kind of a weird question, but what I was going for is, the part of our flow chart we haven't used yet is this. They could have asked us, what's the maximum wavelength on the surface of the star? So how would we find the maximum wavelength on the surface of the star? If this was a test question, there would probably be a new, another part where they did that. You use that formula. And what would we plug in for T? 720. Yeah, that's right. So uh, even though this problem didn't ask for it, that would be a pretty standard type of question where we had to go this extra step. OK, so uh, this is a useful flowchart. You want to make sure this doesn't get lost uh, in your notes here, relating all these different ideas. And we don't want to confuse power and intensity. Power is energy over time but intensity is power over area. So here's where we put time on the bottom, and here's where we put area on the bottom. It's easy to get those confused. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm.